Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Sean Brooks back with some more videos and got a video for you guys today. It's gonna be a review of the AK4000 gimbal. Um, I also will be comparing this gimbal to the Moza Air 2. If you are very interested in it, seeing that type of comparison, go ahead and hit that like, uh, that thumbs up button. Nonetheless though, AK4000, let's get into it. If you guys seen my most air to review again uh if you are on the fence about buying the gimbal i recommend that you watch that video because i definitely answer the questions that need to be asked in that in that review now this one here is just really pertaining to more so just the overall gimbal usage as a whole and what i recommend this gimbal for you to buy with your own earn money especially in talks with the moza air 2. so first of all automatic point over the moza air 2 if we just even talk about that at all is portability just for you guys to see for yourself, here is the gimbal in the case. Open this up. And here you are presented with the gimbal itself. So you, and the, what's, what's pretty cool about this gimbal is that it's modular. So when, when, I, when I decided to travel with this gimbal, I was okay with it being in this case versus my Moza Air 2, which I have, any, I don't like, they don't have anything like that, you know, to break down. So I'm gonna take everything out. This is the mounting piece, piece in which the gimbal connects to police flashlight extension arm and the extra tripod for it. So let's go ahead and put this case to the side here. Okay, so I'm gonna assemble, while I'm assembling this gimbal, to show you this guys how quick and easy it is, I'll be kind of telling you some things about the gimbal that I, um, I like and then kind of the things I don't like. So start off with the pros of this gimbal. One, it being the fact that it's so portable. Right, so as I'm sitting here twisting this gimbal up, it's literally almost set to go. And all I have to do is connect this piece right here and you'll see what I'm talking about. I line the pins together and boom, just like, <laughs> I almost dropped this. Just that simple. Gimbal's already set to go. Now, if you are somebody who does like a lot of uh, traveling for your videos, I would say that this gimbal is good for that, okay? Just keep listening to me. That's what, there's a reason I'm breaking down certain points individually. Again, I cannot repeat on, I cannot stress about how good this gimbal is to travel with. Uh, unlike most other gimbals, mainly most Air 2, you don't, you don't have the type of uh, tra portability with that gimbal. Next. Uh, the lightweight, how light it is. Now this gimbal, it says, um, and this gimbal is ready to hold eight, 8.8 pounds. And for such a small lightweight body, I would say that's actually pretty impressive. Also it does very good with stable footage. As you guys seen from some of the B-roll clips that I'm showing you, the stable footage of this thing, it works perfectly fine. I mean, for the most part, it works like an ideal gimbal. There's no doubt about that. So I know you guys probably wondering there, Sean, like it seems like you're holding something back. What's the problem with this gimbal? Let's get into that. Right now, this gimbal, you can find it on B&A sure, like roughly, if I'm looking at it right now, you can find this gimbal for 500 bucks. That's the first problem. <laughs> the reason that's a problem is because for 500 bucks, this gimbal needs just a little bit more. And what I mean by that is it needs like a little bit more as far as fine tuning. Sometimes with the gimbal that I noticed with the weight that I had on it, again, I'll be using like the Sigma, uh, Sigma Glass with the Metabone Speed Booster with the GH5. The weight does seem to be kind of like a little, too much for it. It does cause the, the, the gimbal to vibrate a little bit. And I know what you guys are saying with Sean, you know, usually that comes with bad balancing. Honestly, I know how to balance a gimbal. With the Moza Air 2, I'm almost like, I'm good now. I know how to balance a gimbal. One thing I think that would help them out is the ease of you, like the ease of balancing a gimbal. So like right now, you can't lock any any of these motors. Like you could, but you like you have to, if you want to lock this one here, you can't. You know what I'm saying? Like there's no way to lock it. I was trying to see like maybe if I just twisted this part here, like no. There's no way to lock this gimbal. So what happens is when you're trying to balance it, you're always trying to make those fine tuned micro adjustments. I honestly think for this gimbal here, where balancing seems to be like a real, real thing that you have to pinpoint, I really believe that they need to go ahead and put a locking mechanism here where you can lock it so it stays in place and so you can make sure you at least get two out of the three axes uh, perfectly balanced and then you can move and work your way down versus kind of do it the traditional way. Next, um, another thing that's kind of like, another thing that's kind of bothersome is I really don't have too much control over the power of the motors. For the most part, everything is automatic. So like I was telling you guys with the Moza Air 2 in that review, I'm able to fine tune each individual motor to say like, if I want how much speed I want to go towards it. This doesn't do that so much, but again, like that's not like a, a huge drawback, but it's just something I just want to kind of keep you in mind for things that around the same price point does offer. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch over to my Galaxy Note 9 
And I'm gonna actually put the GH5 mounted with this. Now the quality is gonna go completely down. I can tell you that right now. When I showed it to my GH uh, to my to my Galaxy Note 9, but I actually just want you to be able to see what I'm talking about as far as like how it's gonna look, uh, the buttons and controls and things of that nature. So we're gonna switch over now. So right now my daughter's using uh, she's recording me using my Galaxy Note 9. So right now we're gonna set the gimbal up. We're gonna set the gimbal up with the camera using this setup. So here we go. Okay, we got the first one balance. Go ahead and tighten that up. Now what I what I did forget to mention to you guys is the fact that it came with this little mounting plate right here. With this mounting plate you're actually able to screw this up top and have it intersect with your camera for you to mount like a microphone. So this is very thoughtful uh, this is very thoughtful to company. All right, so we got that part set up. So let's go ahead and get this balance. And this is the part I'm talking about. With, now, this is the part I'm talking about when you're trying to balance the gimbal. Some of the slots are not like like easy enough for you to actually make those micro adjustments. This is very important because when you're balancing the gimbal, micro adjustments are very very important. So when you're trying to make those, like you have to really put a lot of force behind it, and that's a problem. Cool. Okay. So now we're gonna balance this axis here. All right, that's definitely not balanced. Now, the way you want to balance this, this axis here is like just tilting your camera just a little bit that way. If it's going too much of a, uh, any direction, then it's not good. Almost, just a little bit. Bow, perfect. Okay, now, one thing I did to do, I did forget to do, is get the battery and show you the actual battery door. So, let's go ahead and let me show you that. Battery door is here. You want to twist this. Pop this little door open and boom, this is what a battery does. Intelligent charger they have. Now the intelligent charger is the old Android charger, the micro USB joints. I wish they went USB-C, whatever. Balance. So now we're gonna throw this cable on. This is the cable that you use to actually control the GH5. Let's turn the gimbal on. Hold this button down. All right, so as you guys hear that loud beat, the loud beat lets you know that it's on. Um, and it's smooth for the most part, but some, like here's the thing about using this gimbal, like, and this is why I'm kind of concerned about the weight, because you can almost feel like the motors, like, uh, you know, we said 8.8 .8 pounds, but we really meant 8.5. Like, you, you feel that, you, you feel it. Um, but again here, come close to the camera woman. Here, as you guys can see, you have the touch controls. You also have Bluetooth, where you can actually control it with your phone. Um, then you have the battery symbol, and you can actually, this mode here is to have it where you tilt it, whichever way you want. And what's cool about this gimbal is the joystick. The joystick, I like the joystick uh, over the Moza Air 2 due to the fact that it's more flush. It's not sticking out, because there's definitely been times when my Moza Air 2 was like on my book bag, and it kind of got stuck a little bit. But here we go. You can change the different modes here. All right, you can also change what you want this wheel to do. So if you don't want it to just go up and down, you can change this here. Now it goes to the side like that. But again, you hear, like, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's like a, you hear a click. I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. Like that right there kind of makes me feel just a, a tad bit unsafe with that. But nonetheless, it works. In actual motion, now these different modes here can, will allow you to which one you want to have follow. So you can't like have it in which um, one does follow, one does lock. You have to set it through here. So if I want my tilt to follow right now, as you guys can see, if I want, I want to follow like that, it has to be on this setting here, which is HF. Now when I want to change that, I just tap on the screen, and now it's gonna follow just like this. Boom, boom. But you can see my tilt is no longer following. You guys can see that, let me switch it back. Now this, the roll is gonna follow, the roll axis. But it's, it's doing just fine. So, besides that little click, and right now this is locked. Everything, everything is locked. So for the most part, you have different modes, like they kinda already have preset modes in here for you to use. Uh, you can't fine tune them, but for what you get, it's, it works perfectly fine. So and I hear, bow, 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 bow. So, just fine. So let's just see how this looks with the flash pole that's near doing it. All right, it is tight, tightly on there, nice and secure. 
as you guys can see, this is how much range I get now. So you definitely feel the weight. You definitely feel the weight, but it looks good. It works. See? My daughter's back there laughing somehow. <laughs> But it looks good. It looks good. So let's kind of like start wrapping up my conclusions and final thoughts about this gimbal. And if I can really recommend it to you. Yeah, let's just talk about it some more. We're going back to my GH5 now. All right. So after you've seen the footage of me actually using the gimbal, like in real world, like real world testing, I know you guys are probably wondering with Sean, do you actually recommend this gimbal for this price point? And if you do, why? If you don't, why not? So I don't recommend this gimbal at the price point of $499, and here's why. Um, it seems how this gimbal is very sensitive to improper balance, and I think they should have a little bit more fail safe um, in place for you. One, one would be the, the ability to lock this individual motor here so you don't have to worry about two axes at a time when you're setting up the gimbal. That will definitely help out a lot as far as the gimbal itself kind of fail safe in itself so you won't have to worry about improper balancing because with improper balancing it seems like or just i don't know if it's improper balance or not you guys see me balance the gimbal but for the most part i don't like i don't like the fact that i feel my camera on this gimbal and here's what i mean by that on the moza air 2 it's a very seamless thing like i don't even like i just know i have a camera there yeah but what i mean by the feeling the camera here i feel it in here like i feel the motors i feel it ticking i hear clicking like there's just a couple of things i should not be hearing when I'm actually using this gimbal, it kind of makes me a little bit paranoid. So the fact that I'm actually able to feel the weight, like feel the load on this gimbal, I don't like that. Now it could be my lens. It could be the fact that I have a heavier lens. It could be that. But for, for what I do for my profession to shoot, this is the lens I choose to use. So this is the lens I'm gonna to choose to balance it with. Next thing that I would actually probably mention that they should add on is more individual controls for the motors. I should be able to apply how much power. If I only want 50% power going to these motors, I should be able to apply 50% power. Um, I don't like the fact that they're standard presets already in for the like for what they feel that you need it for so if i don't want my follow to go that fast i should be able to set it so it doesn't go that fast and the last thing i would recommend that they like kind of do like i said is just kind of like fine tune the gimbal just a little bit more um there's a couple of times i was using i heard like clicks in it and that was again kind of paranoid a little scary so now what price would i recommend this gimbal at 350 to 379 350 to 379 this like that's that's an aggressive pricing because like now if you are new to gimbal world you already know like okay i'm gonna spend like around 350 i'm not expecting ronin s or moza air 2 quality but i can work with that and it's like you know what you're getting yourself into when you ban it at that price point but for the fact that it's 499 the moza air 2 is only 50 bucks more that could be a problem because the moza air 2 offers just a more of a polished um experience and you can lock the motors when you're balancing the gimbal and it carries more weight. I got longer battery life. It's, you know, the Moza Air 2 just has like a lot more going over it than, you know, what you're paying here. So for 500 bucks, you're getting this. And then for $50 more, you get all of that. You see what I'm saying? So I think changing the price point around 350 to maybe to even 379, that would be the perfect price point for that. So I can't recommend it again with five, but I can't recommend it between 350 to four. So. Hope that answers your questions. If you got any other questions, please comment down below. If the video like, if you like the video and it helped you out, please share the video. And other than that, it's your boy Sean Brooks, and I'm out. Catch you in the next video.